So do we have to sign in into the chat our name and everything, or is that what we're doing? Hi, good morning, everyone. So you don't have to put your name in the chat. Just be sure to have your name on your um, your screen, on your view screen. Oh. You can check the participants list. And if you're with a group of people, just be sure to, um, as far as the chat, you can name the people that are with you, are in attendance with you. Good afternoon uh, and welcome to the LMS uh, upgrade 2.0. Um, I want to welcome everybody for getting on. It looks like we've got a pretty big group and we'll let those folks continue to uh, to filter in as I believe this is being recorded. I'm Tom Funstein. Most of you guys know, I know most of the names I see on there. I'm director of curriculum here at the IFTI and I know um, Alice, Donna, and Monisha will be going over most of the, the new features here, but I just wanted to to welcome everybody here and just want to kind of um, reiterate here that this new rollout is, you know, is this upgrade as a result of, you know, some of you are members of the task force over about the last 18 months or so, they've been compiling a wish list for things that the LMS could do or things that uh, you at the affiliate level want the learning management system to be able to do. Cause it's, as you guys, if you've been here from the beginning, I see Dan there right up on my screen here when we, when we rolled this out in 2012, it was sort of, it was, it was meant to be a, you know, repository for the curriculum to the content to house it. Then we went to allowing for PDFs to be able to download so we could easily update curriculum. Then it went to SCORMS um, where we were tracking. And then we went to third parties, certificate uh, completions, to uh, it integrating with the IMSC each night to, um, uh, what else do we got there? The, the third party certificates, as I mentioned before, the syncing with the app, right? The mobile member app. So, you know, this is just a, a new, another chapter in the learning management system. So um, we think that the suggestions that have come through the task force will help make a better user experience, right? Both, both for the learner and both for the instructor. Um, it'll also have some features that will um, help maybe, uh, improve the communication and collaboration, right? Well, what a true LMS might give them. So we're doing, gonna do some uh, courses, hopefully rolling out like a teaching techniques one, which will be an instructor led training using the learning management system. Um, so there'll be discussion boards, there'll be the lecture notes, there'll be able, ability to, to launch a Zoom right within the learning management system. So, so we're really excited about these, uh, about these uh, up, upgrades um, and again, the ones that are in particular that, that the task force and the group has brought to us based on the needs at the affiliate level. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to either Donna or, or Alice um, that will, they will go over in obviously greater depth, um, the details um, for this first uh, webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. So I'll start sharing my screen. So uh, we'll I will start with a learner view of the new LMS system. So let me just start sharing my screen. 
can you see the user agreement? Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so we're very excited to show you the new version. Our team has been testing the new system for the past uh, past few months. And after this webinar, you, you'll get a chance to log into the uh, system before it's launched on January 6th. So we'll, uh, Mo will be sending the information to the test environment and some uh, demo accounts that you can use. So I'll start with uh, the learner view. So once we make the changes on January 6th, what will your apprentices see on their um, LMS? So let's start with that. So uh, from this screen, when you sign on to the LMS, this is the first page that they'll look at. So it's a terms of agreement and all they need to do is agree to that and click accept. Once they do that, they're led to the homepage or uh, I mean the dashboard. So from the dashboard, um, uh, you're looking at some of the existing features plus uh, the enhancements to the new LMS. So let me point out uh, the main uh, parts of the LMS. So the header would be the main menu. It's quite similar to the old LMS. We'll uh, see some additional features. Then by default, they'll be seeing the enrollments page, similar to my account. So my account now will be my dashboard and our team will be talking about the changes on the dashboard. So let's start with the main menu. So what's different with the main menu? So after dashboard, you'll see here a message center. So uh, Tom talked about the wish list. So the second uh, request from all district council is, is there a way to communicate to my apprentices? Is there a way to communicate to the district council? And with the old LMS, um, we tried uh, automatic emails, but uh, it looked like spam, so we turned it off. So with this system, now you can uh, send emails to your uh, apprentices. So um, uh, it addresses that need for communication. So if you look at it, it's a stripped down version of your Google or Yahoo, whatever email system that you have. If uh, you do online banking or pay, pay your utilities, it's the same, you can email within the system without an email address. So that's the benefit of this message center. So um, if, you, if we look at it, basic features, inbox, sent and draft. So from my inbox, I've already received, as a learner, I've received emails from um, uh, my, my instructor. So my instructor is uh, tagged as training demo admin. And I see that uh, alert that I have a message from her. So if I click that, so Alice sent me this uh, email. So uh, we'll, we're trying to do like a role play where I'm the learner and she's my instructor. So she sent me this and she's, she's telling me about a class that I'm supposed to attend. And I just hit reply, then I can say yes, or I, I'm done with this task or whatever the question was. And I can just simply send the email. And from Alice's view, she can, she can read my message and she'll also get an alert from me that that email was sent. So Al, just let me know once you get it. So from the inbox, uh, I also have uh, my sent emails, uh, emails that I have sent to my instructor. So I, let's say I needed help with something, I sent her an email. Uh, the uh, task one was confusing. Then again, I just replied to her email about uh, instructor led training. And I can also compose email, then just save it as drafts and send it when I complete my email. So the, the good thing about the message center, we talked about control. So you can send email to a person. So I was sending an email to the training demo, which was, which is set up as an, an admin. But as uh, instructors or coordinators, you can send emails to the district council, to all your membership. So let's say we're sending emails to district council three. So you're sending that uh, specific message to your district council. Or if you notice, once I hit that um, search, it's giving me all the, uh, all the groups. So if you're a district council and you've set up your groups per class, so this is an easy way for you to send that message. 
So let's say district council three, they have different levels. Uh, so I'm sending everybody who's in this group, let's say it may be 20 people or 100 people. So whatever I typed here, um, let's say classroom training, and it might be dated for next week. And if I have some changes in the class or, or some information that I want to send to them, I just type it here and I, I click on send. And it's, it's the email is sent to everybody who's in, in uh, who belongs to this group. So that's one of the big enhancements of um, the new LMS. The only uh, limit for the message center, you can't attach documents. So Alice, Mo, and Ken will show you ways to do that uh, using other widgets or other features in the LMS. But again, the message center is a basic way to communicate to your apprentice or apprentices or to the whole class. So after the message center, uh, you'll see here a catalog. So the catalog, uh, it's, the changes are more about the layout. It still has a way to search the catalog. Um, as admins, you have access to everything or uh, a trade specific catalog. For uh, our learners, they're only limited to what we assign to them. Most of the time, they just have the coronavirus and that's it. So with a new LMS, you might be seeing other um, tests that we've done, like if there's an instructor led training or a learning path, um, they will be seeing that from their catalog view. And again, uh, we will be discussing this uh, as we, uh, or I mean for ILT and Learning Path, those would be the second webinar that we're scheduling for uh, January and February. So aside from the search feature, you have a different way to filter the catalog now. So you can filter by course information, or you can filter by catalog course, learning path, or uh, the types of uh, courses available. Then you can also um, change your view. So this would be the tile view and there, there is a list view. And this also applies to the enrollments. Again, one of the wish lists is, is there a way to uh, simplify how we look at our courses or how we find our courses. So that's now possible with the different ways to filter the catalog and the courses. So aside from the catalog uh, on your main menu, we have news, help, the uh, IFTI website, admin tools, and instructor lounge. So these are um, existing features in the old LMS, nothing has changed. And most of uh, these um, links point back to the LMS homepage. So that is still the same. So the other change that's found on the main menu would be the notifications. So uh, aside from the message center, I'm seeing that I have an alert. And as a learner, if I click on that, it's telling me that I have something to complete. So the alert serves as uh, um, a way for the learner to know that an action is required from him or her. So, um, I can click on that and just review what the task is assigned to me. And uh, Alice or Mo will show a demo of how to assign this task for the learner to get an alert. The other feature that you're, you'll find on the main menu are languages. So um, we have the top 10 uh, languages that are frequently used in websites and you can switch from an English view to Spanish view. So what this does when you do this, um, if you're familiar with Google Translate, it just changes the headers and the labels within the website. It does not translate the course itself or um, the, aside from the course, the catalog information. So it's just the built-in labels within, within the system. So I think with that enhancement, it, it would um, help them navigate. If I'm not an English speaking student, at least it would help me navigate through the system because it, it tells me um, simple information like for my dashboard or um, what to do if I need to click. So th those are some of the enhancements in 
in the main menu. So, and I can always switch back to English and just click that. And it, again, the website changes its labels. The last one on the main menu is uh, the accounts information. So we're familiar with the My Profile page. So this is where it goes. So aside from that, um, if we're looking at my screen, it's showing that I'm signed on as myself, but I'm impersonating a, a learner account. So as admins, you can impersonate another account uh, within your district council. So I'm signed on as training demo one, then I, I can just click on my profile and let's see the changes uh, that are found in the my profile page. So same information, um, all information coming from uh, IMSC uh, is still grayed out. Uh, they can still change their password, time zone on this page. An additional feature would be um, the, the avatar. So there's a way to add an avatar to the profile. So I'm not big with avatars or profile pictures, but the kids uh, today, um, my children, they, they, they make their own avatars and they assign it to their accounts. So there's a way to do that now with the system. So when you search for, for an account, you would see their avatars or when, whenever um, they, they send you something, you would always um, see their avatars. And aside from that, there's a way to upload files to the profile. So this is something that I uploaded last week. And if my instructor signs on or looks at my profile, she can see it. Then Alice, my instructor, sent me uh, a document that I can look at from her end. She uploaded it to my profile and I can just click it and see what's the document she sent to me. So this is one way to sh share documents within the system. So this is uh, very specific to the person. If you're sending uh, a document or assigning um, files to a group, so there's another way to do, to do that in the system. Let me just close out. So that's the last um, feature on the main menu. Let me go back to my dashboard. So from the dashboard, um, the enrollments page is by default loaded in the system. Everybody gets the coronavirus. If they're active members, they get this um, automatically assigned to them and they get the learner orientation module. The rest is assigned by the district council. For, so for the sample account, it was assigned WMIS uh, for Canada and uh, some health and safety account, uh, I mean courses. So if we looked at the catalog, uh, you're, you're seeing the same filters on the enrollments page. So there's a way to sort by course information or filter your courses. So uh, the filter is just my enrollments. If I click on that, it changes my view. So it loads more courses, which may be more difficult to view if let's say you have an instructor account where you have 100 to 300 courses pre-assigned to you. So this filter will help out if you just wanna focus on, let's say your current enrollments and apply that and it fills, filters your view to just those specific enrollments. Again, there is a way to list, to view them by list or through a tile view. Okay, so any questions so far? So we just uh, finished look, looking at the main menu and the enrollments section of the My Dashboard. Do you have any questions? You can type it on the chat room or you can unmute yourself. I have a question. Um, where did the admin menu go? I don't see, uh, I see admin tools and things like that, but admin menu is what we're using to uh, track student progress. Right. Or, I that's a good question, John. So um, we're, uh, the, this presentation, my demo is a learner view. So a learner view would not have access to the dash, uh, to the admin menu. So the admin menu would be found on the left side of the page and Alice will sign on after me and we'll show you uh, uh, the admin view from, that will be, that's being used by the instructors and coordinators. 
All right, so thank you learner, very much. Yep, a learner would not have the, the admin view. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Thanks, John. No, Donna. Yep. Joe McGee here. Hi, Joe. Uh, is there a way that we can, uh, so for, I'm run the Glazers, uh, set up the Glazers program, uh, like where, when I sign up on an apprentice as a first term, I give them all the courses for the four years, but just that and not any of the other things. Is there a way that uh, is set up now or is it something that we would have to uh, add and delete different classes? Yeah, uh, so it's now possible in the LMS. So there's a feature here. It's not set up for this demo account, but it's the learning path. So once uh, you create a learning path, so you just uh, specify the example. So it's a trade and it's year one or level one, and it loads a, a new widget from the learner, and she, he, uh, she or he would just see glazing level one, then click on it, and it would specify all the courses. So we have a, a scheduled webinar um, January, the last week of January, just to discuss about that, because our plan is from the enrollments, because right now we have all the courses listed as enrollments. From the enrollments, we want to transition to a learning path. So it's an organized way to look at the courses and not just list them alphabetically. So we want to list them by level. So we would have that webinar separately to guide the district councils on how to do it. Thank you. Okay. I still has a, a question as well. Yeah, I actually have, I have two, sorry. Um, question one was, um, when you're sending out the emails and you said that you can go in there and choose the group that that message is going to be assigned to, um, can you choose multiple groups at the same time with the same message, or do I have to resend that to each separate group? Uh, we haven't tried that, but let's, let's do it now. So let's say DC 91. One more zero. Ken, what, while I'm doing the, this, is this is that pass, possible? We've never even, we haven't tried that either. So yeah, I'm not sure. I, it might be a semicolon separating it okay. if it works. Let's try it. Yeah, it's not loading the, the next group. We can okay. test that and let you know, but we have that's okay. something that we haven't tested. Okay, Phil, okay. We'll, we'll test that and uh, let the group know. But right now it, it's, it might be uh, something with the commas and semicolons, but we'll, let, we'll try that. Okay. Uh, the second question is when the, are, when the students are able to choose their avatars, are they allowed to upload their own pictures into those as well? Or is there gonna be like a drop down menu to put your avatar together? Right now it's the students would be able to upload their own and I'm not sure if that's something that everybody's gonna wanna do, but um, that's the way it's set up now. And no, I'm okay with it as long as I can remove it in case any image that comes up there is not appropriate. <laughs> that's yeah, always the that, scary part. Yep, the admin can always remove anything attached to the profile. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, I got one. <clears throat> Donna. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, it's Bob Denton. I'm from Atterbury Job Corps. Um, so with the avatar, I know that we can type in our students' names and right now for our Job Corps students. So does the name, can we still do it by the name or do we just have to do it only by their avatar? Do you mean to search for a user? Yes, ma'am, yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, we can, we'll, we'll show you that as well. Um, you can okay. now, yeah, there's, it's an enhanced feature for searching and before it used to just be, um, you know, your member ID or your email address or last name and now it's much more flexible. So we'll give yes. you, a, we'll, we'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I jumped the gun. <laughs> no problem. We have a question from Frankie Jones. He's asking if um, the assessments are available in Spanish for CAS and painter or draw, drywall? Mm. 
Yeah, so uh, the, the assessments are not available in Spanish. We have some assessments uh, created for District Council 51 that are in Spanish. We may have some courses in health and safety that are also in Spanish, but they are built in the courses. Hey, Donna, this is Tom. Yeah, um, but, but Frankie, maybe offline, just reach out to us. And I, we have a, a group that we're working with now that does some translation, as Donna mentioned, for some of the courses. They're fairly reasonable. Um, and maybe we can get those turned around for you if it's something um, that, you, that you need. Um, so just, just reach out to us and, and I'll, we'll, I'll follow up with our, with, um, our vendor on that. That's all. Other questions before we go through the widgets? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, let's start looking at uh, some new features on, on the my, my dashboard. So we mentioned widgets. Uh, widgets are uh, simply a display of uh, frequently used functions within the system. Um, so if you think about it, if it's the apps on your phone or a TV remote for your TV, so we have those available now in the LMS. So the view, you can have a, a single view or I mean a single column or a, two columns like what I have now. I, I want to see all the widgets like in, shown in two columns. So you, you can um, manage your views for the widgets. Then if I, so I already loaded my widgets, but if I start closing them, so by default, it would look like this, then the user can manage how, uh, how his page would look like. So let's say if I need to see my certificates every time I sign on, so I just click that. And if that's all I need, I can stop there. But let's say I want to see my transcript too, so I can load it. Or if I want everything, I can just click everything. So every widget would have a minimize, a refresh, and a way to close it. And you can sort it by priority. Let's say you always want your certificates on top, then everything else would be at the bottom. So you can do that. Or again, if you don't need to see your transcripts or you don't need to see uh, this widget, you can just close that. So some of the widgets are existing features. Um, so the certificates are the certificates of completion. Um, now you, it's an easy way to save it as a PDF, print it or view it. Then we have the calendar uh, that's now uh, enabled in the new LMS and it's district council specific. Before it was global. So everything that you're doing for your district council is seen by everybody, but now uh, there was a way to manage the calendar. So if you set up uh, instructor led training within your district council, it's not now possible. Then uh, the new widgets now have uh, the communities. So again, it's another way to communicate to your um, the, uh, apprentices or district council and Alice will talk more about that. Then there's a widget for instructor led training. So um, as a learner, I can just click on what session was assigned to me by my admin and uh, Alice or Mo will show you how to do that. Let's say for this, I can just click on that and see that this is the information for the classroom training that I need to attend. Then discussion feed, um, similar to the instructor lounge. So there's a way to talk to people within the group uh, aside from emailing them. So I'm part of the group training demo and I can just say test. And everybody who's part of that, Alice, Mo, and Ken Rogers will, will get that uh, in real time. Then I'm also part of another training group and I can just comment on what was posted. And same thing, uh, once I start hitting that um, enter uh, but button, uh, it would show on their discussion feed too. And again, this is all learner view and Alice will show you the um, 
the admin view from her end. So I'll start on sharing my account and let Alice share her account. So now we're looking at the admin perspective. So while she's sharing her account, do you have any questions about the widgets? Yeah, I have a question. This is Jesus from Angel Job Corps. The calendar, uh, you said it was District Council um, Pacific. So since our students at Job Corps are not part of the District Council, mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to sign an LMS class for every week, there, there's no way to make it like group Pacific. So like everybody in my group, they'll get the schedule of the classes and it'll be in their calendar or mm -hmm. it's only District Council. Yeah, so uh, for Job Corps, we create a, a specific group for uh, Job Corps. So if you have some sample um, group events that you, you wish to add, maybe we can help walk you through the steps, but it's, it's possible for Job Corps too. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, so Sardana, as she said, she was showing you kind of the, the learner view. And now I'm going to walk you through the admin view. So, so you are all admin, and this is what your screen will look like. In some cases, it's really not going to look too much different than what the, um, what the learner's screen looks like, but there will be some different functionality. Um, so the, the main part, um, the first piece of that admin is that I think remember that the admin menu used to be at the top, but now the admin menu is over here on the left-hand side. So you'll have access to four different top parts of that, of that menu. And the first one is the set of the systems. Um, and we do have a new feature for announcements. So there's a lot of new communication tools within, um, within the LMS. And basically the, um, the announcement tool will um, allow you to create, you know, announcements about news events all to all users, or you can do it to a targeted subgroup. Um, so you'd be able to pick and choose. I think someone was just asking about whether or not um, you can send to multiple, and I believe through this one that that you can. Ken can correct me if I'm wrong, um, but yeah. So here, so you'll see down here. So you can create a name for your announcement. Um, that, you know, that's an active announcement. If you have a particular date that you want that announcement to go out and a, a particular time frame that you want that announcement to remain active, then you would identify that here and by putting the start date and an end date. You can either click all users or uh, users within the following groups. So, so that might be one way that you can communicate with, with your learners and be able to um, to select multiple groups or you know, selected targeted groups. Um, this account is associated with DC4. So you'll see a lot of DC4 um, in, this, um, in this demonstration. Um, so, and then you would click the next tab and this is where you would create your announcements. So you'd be able to um, add sources and type in your announcement the exact way you want it. Um, and, then, um, and then you would save the changes and, and send the announcement. So that's a, that's a new feature. Um, and we hope that you'll like that one because I think it's gonna be a valuable one for you. The next menu item in the admin is the, are the users and groups. So the groups, um, many of you are used to, um, basically functions and just pretty much the same way. Everything just looks a little bit different, but you can create a, a you can create a new group. Um, we'll still be assigning permissions per group, um, but we be, might be able to do a more global permission uh, so that you don't have to rely on us always, you know, you have to call us every time you create a new group. So um, you'll be able to do that um, just as you normally would. The one thing about um, the, new, uh, the new look and feel is that you'll see that there really isn't an exit. There's no exit. X to click. So we always go back to either my dashboard or back to the menu item that you're looking for. So then the, uh, the users are also part of this group and you can see import data activity, the certificate data and leaderboards are part of that. So your users, um, you would 
search for those. Someone was asking about the search field um, in the um, overall. So the search field is now much more flexible. Um, so if we want to find, say, I know Phil Parker is on the call, let's see if we can find Phil. So now we can easily type in first and last name. Obviously, still use member ID, you can still use um, the email address. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's much, it's much quicker now and much easier to search for somebody because you can, you can use their full name. Um, it will even find typically um, any iteration of it. So, you know, like if it was, if your name in the LMS or in the IMS is Thomas, you can still put in Tom and, and the last name, will, you know, it will still find that. So much more um, flexible in terms of finding users. And then from there, you would do all the same things with, with that user. So this the import data activity, the import certificate data, and the team leaderboards are all are all the same features that we had before, but this is where you'll find them. Again, the, the admin menu, it's not, doesn't really have a name, but you'll know that this is the admin menu along the left-hand side. Uh, Donna mentioned the learning paths. So this is where you would create a learning path. Um, I'll show you a sample. Uh, Ken created a learning path in here. So basically it's a way that you can organize a grouping of courses, a predetermined set of courses um, that you would like for your apprentice to complete um, and, um, and then assign that to them. So then <clears throat> they will be, they'll complete each course and when they complete that course, then they'll have a completion certificate for that, um, for that particular learning path. And here is where you would create, you know, all the, all the new information. You can create email notifications from within. So it's very, tar their groups are very targeted. So if you have someone in your learning path group, then this is where you would come to send a, a message directly to them. So it wouldn't be global. It would just be the people within this learning path. Um, the enrollments are the same here. You can create an, a new enrollment and add something to, um, to their record to that learning path. Um, oh, let me go back. Okay, and then um, we have instructor-led training, which is the next piece of that. Um, the instructor training modules, um, I, think I have one in here for DC4. So I have one more, I think. So there's a, a sample instructor-led training module. And this is where um, you would create sessions. Again, always a, a, the availability for you to communicate. There's always an email notification there so that you can communicate with the people in your groups. Um, it'll tell you what sessions you have recently, if there are any upcoming sessions. Um, the dashboard, this is, this is the dashboard. You can look further at the properties of that particular instructor-led. So you can enter in a description, the objectives, um, and then you would save that. And that would become part of the user's, um, group, the user's enrollments. Um, again, many people didn't have access to sessions prior to this. So this is a way that you'll be able to uh, create a session so if you have a group of people coming in or want them to come in, you know, on January 3rd or January 5th, then you can create your, um, a session for that, that it's classroom. You can even set it up as a web-based or a WebEx. So you're, we're using Zoom or um, the GoToMeetings. Um, so you can do that. There's also online if you were, you know, if we're still not back into the training centers. Um, the number of seats, any waiting, where the where this instructor-led training will take place, or where it's hosted by it, if it's a if it's a um, online learning, a description of the location, if you need to if you need to give a description of it, um, time zone, and then you would say which time it's going to start and which date and time it's going to start and the um, end date and time. 
Um, there's also a feature here that allows you to, um, to, to say when you're going to close the enrollment. So if you want to make sure, if you have planning to do or you have to order supplies, um, then you can close your enroll enrollment, you know, either days, weeks, or months in advance. So it just depends upon what, what type of training you are going to be conducting. Um, and then whether or not you want to keep it keep that private. Um, Ken, can you tell me what the private, what is the privacy part of this? The private would just keep it um, so it's not open to the entire groups in public. So once okay. you set up a few, um, you'll be able to see how that works. Okay. All right. Within oh. the... Oh, oh Alex, um, Phil Harper has his hand raised. Oh, okay, Phil, I don't know if it's, it might have been raised from before, but do you have a question, Phil? No, it was raised from before. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll okay. Manisha, can you put his hand down? <laughs> Thank you, though. Um, for each of the um, sessions and the instructor-led training, you can uh, add who the instructors are going to be. So you can have a primary and a secondary instructor. Um, and the access refers to whether or not they're going to be able to um, take attendance, print a roster, and send messages. So if you allow your secondary instructor to, to have unlimited access, then you'll also be able to communicate with the students. And then finally, um, you can add any resources. So this is a newer feature as well. Um, the resources allow you to kind of create a, a, a database of the equipment, um, um, any kind of safety equipment or materials that you might need um, for any of that training. So you can, we are thinking about, you know, using the local as your, um, as your name and then, you know, local 1937, we know that they have safety goggles. Um, in there in there for this particular class so I can add that to the class and that way the instructor will know what materials they need so that would just be something that would be developed over time those things can be added um, so that you do kind of have a, that, that um, repository of resources within your district council Okay, um, and then finally, there's always notifications. So if you want to send a um, new email and notification, then you can click here. If there were any other ongoing notifications, then you'd be able to read those at this point as well. So that's all for the instructor-led training, which is part of your main menu here, of your, your um, admin menu. The Alice, can I add one other thing? Sure. Um, if you're assigned as an instructor to an instructor-led training class, either in person or WebEx, and the date is coming up, the little bell notification in the top right hand, um, the instructor will get a notification reminding them that, hey, you have a class coming up. So that is another feature that um, if you're assigned as an instructor or a, a backup instructor, a notification will appear that, you know, tomorrow you're supposed to teach this class, don't forget. Right, and you'll see that I have, I'm, I'm listed as an instructor for, um, for this particular course. So it's giving me a, a warning that, hey, you have an upcoming instructor-led training. Um, and the second warning is that uh, notification is that I am instructing. It's not that it's just coming up, it's that I'm instructing that particular class. Now, uh, on the chat room, there are some questions about the calendar and uh, well, we already addressed it, but the calendar is also tied to the instructor-led uh, training uh, admin menu. So if you created sessions uh, like uh, in-person safety classes and you have those specific dates, it will show up on your calendar. Right. Uh, yeah, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, um, so the final piece of the... Um, oh, and then there's also certifications, which is something we'll, we're not going to roll out right away, but we'll be um, addressing those in the next training. And then, of course, reports. Um, I believe that Monisha is probably going to walk you through the reports, but it's, it's the, the look and feel is a little bit different. 
Um, but I think it's more streamlined and, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more easy for you to, um, to filter with the reports that you wanna create. So again, so now I wanna go back to my dashboard. So I simply click on my dashboard. There are no click to close buttons or anything like that. So always remember, follow the pathway, the file path here to go back to where you wanna go. Um, and again, these, this is for admin, this is the admin menu feature for you guys. So um, I'll jump down here to the calendar since that's been a hot topic. So the calendar um, is district council specific and you'll see, we saw that I have a notification up here for instructor-led training that's coming up on December 17th. And that is also highlighted on my calendar. So I can click on it. So be it's because I set a date in the session, I, I created a session. So when that date is put on the session and it's saved, then it becomes a notification and it goes right on the calendar. So this is just a view. You can see, okay, well, I'm going to the new, no, I'm going to a new session. It's in Hanover, Maryland, and the meeting time is from uh, December 17th to, to December 18th, and it ends at three o'clock. Does hey, that I'll, answer? Yeah. There are a few questions about ILT in the calendar and registration. Uh, if you can look at Dana, this is question, and Walt, well, I think they're all related. So, um, and let, me, let me go back and make sure I... Okay, so the question is, can the DC add in-person safety courses to the calendar? Um, can an online registration be tied to the calendar entry? Yeah, is that? All right, so we have a, it's, I think Donna answered those already. Oh, I think so, it looked like there were, <laughs> there were answers. <laughs> okay. So Dana had a question, she said. Yeah, okay, continuing what education. If, Um, so are you talking about like journeyman training, upgrade training? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, well, yeah. So you would still, there's still kind of a checks and balances. So um, the students aren't going to be actually registering themselves for classes, but you'll be able to work with them and, and maybe create a learning path or assign them enrollments as they need them. So, so yes, they can. Those things can still be added to the LMS. It's just that the students um, don't. They're not going to be actually registering for a class. You're going to register for them for the class. Does that answer your question? Well, that, yeah. The uh, yeah. the question I had earlier. Well, I have two because I don't know where the raise the hand thing is on this. I couldn't find it, but um, <laughs> so I asked earlier about the calendar because since we're doing a distance learning, we're setting up LMS classes every week, but they're not registered in a district council. They're through the job core system. And I was just wondering if we could, if there was a way when we set up the calendar, it could be by group and not district or like, not just district council. And my yeah. second, okay. oh, so, sorry. And my second question was um, back when you were uh, the, in, the instructor, like when you set up an instructor in-person class, and you're using WebEx for your um, for your class. Does it set up a link right there, or do you have to copy and paste a link in there that gets sent to everybody? Um, it can might be a very best answer to that question, but I, I do know that you have to. Um, you still use your WebEx account, and then you you type in a key. But maybe Ken can elaborate on that a little bit better than I'm I'm able to speak about it. Yeah, basically the LMS uses an API, which is communication on the back end to set up sessions within the WebEx or Zoom accounts. So once you set up a course or a session in the LMS, it will send that information back to the, the Zoom or WebEx account and create it and keep all the, um, the WebEx information in the course itself. Then you're able to manage the roster, um, the attendance, assign grades, pass fail, um, all that kind of stuff. So when you get into roster management, um, everybody that's enrolled in that will then be um, marked as attendance. So it's actually pretty slick. Oh, okay, nice. And uh, and sorry, I cut you off about the 
arranging the calendar by groups. Is that possible? I'm sorry about that. Uh, the calendar would be a individual's view of their calendar. So everybody in your system would pretty much have a different calendar, depending on um, if they're an instructor or student, what courses they're enrolled in and when things are due. So it's a pretty much live view of what's needed for that particular person, not necessarily a particular group. Oh, okay. So, so if yeah. Alice logs in, she'll get a calendar with what's due for her and she might be in a group, but also signed up for a, another class for some reason. So it's not necessarily per group, it's per individual. And you can manage them by group and assign them um, permissions and roles and um, courses and things like that, but it'll show up on their individual calendars. Thank you. That, okay. So, that, that so me. Jesus, I think, I think your question is more along the lines of the fact that your, some of your training is not within the LMS, but you want to add their, that training to the calendar. No, he answered my question. Oh, I, I got okay. It. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, so as before, um, just in general, students are not coming onto the LMS and registering themselves for classes. There's still going to be that checks and balance and, and that role that's either the admin and the district council, the instructor, um, or the DOT that's going to be approving enrollments um, for all students. So students are not coming in and saying, oh, I want to go to this class and registering. It's, it's, there are still checks and balance there. Um, so, you know, so you'll still be going through and assigning or enrolling students um, into the courses or into the sessions or sending them to training at the, at the, um, at the international um, based on your decision. All right. I think we, is that about, is that all the questions so far? Yeah, we're, we're recording this and uh, we will be putting it up on our YouTube page and we'll We'll put it in the LMS as well. Penny, do you have a question? No, I was just putting my name in there. I didn't read it at the beginning. Okay. Uh, there's a question about the calendar again. Uh, does it send email notifications? So it doesn't, but when you create the session, when you create classes, there's a way for you to set up email notifications. What it does is uh, remember that alert on the main menu. If you have them enrolled in that class, they would see that notification. Then there's a question about, will, uh, will there be a guide? Yes. Uh, so um, tomorrow morning, um, we'll be sending out an email with the link, with the manual. And hopefully we finish uh, publishing the recording. So you'll have all those resources tomorrow morning. Yes, manuals are available. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we're back on the My Dashboard page. Again, you're looking at an admin view. I'm logged in as an admin. Um, we've looked at the, um, the admin features on, this, on the left-hand side. Um, Donna went through uh, the enrollments um, and, you know, the, the different views that you can see, the filters and the views. So you just would click on which view you want, a list view or a tab, a tile view. Um, and so then, um, and also, you, you know, the avatar. So we're, we do like the avatars. That seems to be something that is new and, and kind of helps us to more easily find our courses based on the avatar. Um, so you get some basic information on, on the front of the course um, tile. And if you want more information, the, the little I, the information button, is, takes you to your, what you know is the course details page. Um, so this page has all the same information that you're used to seeing. Um, this up next feature is a, is a little bit different for us. So, um, so if you were enrolled in a, um, a learner path or if like in this case, this course actually has two lessons and I haven't started either one. So it's telling me, okay, next up is lesson one. But when I finish lesson one, then this will say up oh, next lesson two. So it's kind of a quick guide for you once you log into the course to say, okay, where, you know, where am I? Um, and then always with the green arrows is what launches the course. 
Um, and then as usual, the there's some basic um, logistics of the course here and um, the user rating, a description, all the resources are still available um, and the obje objectives of the course. So that's, you know, your typical course details page um, that you're probably used to seeing. So again, we click the dashboard to go back to the main dashboard. Um, I can see that I have, you know, I can scroll down and see how many courses that I have. Um, and then there's also widgets that we use um, for, the, um, for the admin. Um, so we'll start here with the documents. Um, and the documents are, um, all of, this was a request that we've had, you know, from a lot of, um, of our DOTs and instructors. They want to be able to find um, a document that was associated with a class. And before they had to, you know, log in and go to the class and then find the course materials. Now those documents are available to you on the homepage, on your dashboard. So these documents here are all of the, any of the courses that I'm enrolled in that you see up here, if there are any documents that are attached to these courses, they're located right here. So you can see I have eight pages of documents. Um, <clears throat> so you'd, you'd be able to um, search for it. So let's say, um, let's say I wanted to have, I wanted to find that document that they talked about when we had took the coronavirus course. So you can search for the, for the document and it brings up actually three. So I can decide which one I want to view and then you simply open it up and then you can download it, you can read it, um, you can print it. So, so those course um, materials are available to you um, in, in their entirety for all of the courses um, that you're in, actually enrolled in. Okay, I think Donna mentioned earlier too, she mentioned my communities. Um, so my communities are, um, are any of the groups that I'm, that the user, so uh, the user's a part of. So you know, if you're a part of DC4, if you're a part of a glazing group, um, I'm part of a training demo group. Uh, we need to get more creative in our, in our <laughs> samples, but um, our training demo group. And it's, this is more, this is auto-populated. So this isn't like an interactive widget. But because I'm part of this group, I can also look and see if there is a discussion, which I can see that there is a discussion that's been going on. I can read what's been going on with that particular um, group. And then um, if there are any documents that are part of that group, um, I, can, I can read those too. So quick access, this is just a logo, but, um, but you'll, you'll see the, the idea of it is that you can have a training, um, I mean, a, a group, and it becomes part of your community and gives you easy access to any of the course materials, discussion groups um, that are part of that particular group. Um, not instructors don't, you know, every single class does not have to have an open discussion. Um, those are things that you set up when you create the course. So, or when you create the session or the instructor led training. Um, so you, you can decide whether or not you're going to allow for um, a discussion or not. We've already talked about the calendar. And then again, the discussion feed um, is, is for all of the groups. So anything that I'm involved in um, will have separate discussions here. So I can see globally anything that I've been involved in. Any, any trainings, any instructor-led training, any groups that might have some discussions going back and forth, those will all be listed here. Right now, they're all part of one, um, one group, but it might be multiple groups. So I can, I can post a comment here, um, back and forth with Donna, as, uh, me as her instructor, you know, her as the student, <clears throat> we can um, look at that. And then you can just click and see what the group is in a different view. And then again, same thing, the documents. So there's multiple ways to communicate and to find documents that are associated with, um, 
associated with any of the courses or groups that you're involved in. I see there's a lot of questions, so let me take a little quick break to see. Yeah, uh, we, we already answered uh, two of the okay. questions. So the question about courses being, uh, being able to download the courses. So everything in the document documents widget is downloadable. Uh, some parts of the uh, course, like the online training is not. So as much as possible, we upload course materials within the courses and everything under course materials will be found in the documents widget or um, any document that you share with your group. Then there's also a question about um, clicking go versus the arrow. So now it's the green arrow. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions about what I, any other questions? Someone raised their hand with the Samsung, but I'm not sure who that is. Does somebody have a hand raised that has a question? Nope. Okay. Okay. So, um, so also on this page, another widget, and again, you know, these widgets we can, um, if I really want my calendar to be viewed, oops, I want my calendar to be the first thing I see, I can move, you know, oops, I can move them around. Um, the only thing that remains static on the page are the enrollments. So you can't shift those around. Um, you, can't, you can't move it to the top or the bottom and you can't make it go away. So the enrollments will always be displayed um, in your in your window and again you can click to close or open up wider any of these any of these widgets on your page so you'll know you'll see how it turns to the four the four arrows that means that you can move it around your page so you can group them how you want okay so uh, let's see what's next the the leaderboards I think you're all familiar with the leaderboards um, the, we have one that's for the learner and as well as one that's that's more suitable for um, instructors or admin overall. Um, I can't remember, Donna, did you show this? Uh, not yet, Al. Okay. But the leaderboard was part of the old LMS. We had to uh, turn it off because of um, speed issues, but now it's working fine. And there are two versions, as Al's mentioned, their team leaderboard and my leaderboard. So Alice will show us a, a way to filter. So now you can filter the leaderboard. Yeah, so we'll look first at the team leaderboard. Um, you can uh, sort by the top 10 um, by any of these um, uh, filters, <laughs> sorry. So once you click on it, it will reload it and, um, and filter it by whatever it was that you selected by course credits. So it's, and you, you can do it by year, by month, by from all time. <clears throat> the um, the my leaderboard um, is is a is for the it's the learner is who's on top for the learners. Um, and you can so also sort that now um, by you know course total, course credits, certificates. You can do at any time like all time this year you know, who was best last week. Um, and then the nice thing here is that you can either look globally or you could look um, for your district council. You could look regionally and um, you can also sort by member class or by trade. So there's definitely some options there. It's, it's kind of a fun way to create a, maybe a little competition um, if you're having trouble get getting people to finish, you know, some online training or, or journeymen to attend training, maybe there's a way that you can um, um, promote some healthy competition by using the leaderboards. Did I miss anything on that? Okay, and then we talked um, earlier about the instructor-led training sessions. So when you um, are enrolled in an instructor learning uh, led training session, you also will see that listed here um, as a widget. Um, and you can click and look at what that um, session is about. 
<clears throat> and that way it's a quick glance to, you know, what's coming up and, and what you're scheduled for. So they'll also be on the calendar. There's a session for it. Um, and you see this one is for a future date. So I'll, I'll have a notification about that. That would be shown in my calendar. Um, I would have to go to 2021, um, but there's, there'll be a little notification there on my calendar for January 6th. And then finally, the transcript, which we're all also familiar with. Um, this will now be filtered based on course completion. Learn, if you're assigned to a learning path, that completion will be there. And then if you've completed an instructor-led um, training. Um, and the thing about the instructor-led training that there, there may be different things that you might have to do. There might be tasks. Um, so now you'll be able to upload a document if they need to uh, take a task and go out to the training center and perform something or answer questions. There can be interaction um, back and forth between the instructor and and the students. So basically, if there's something that they need to complete, that could be uploaded as a task in their instructor-led training and um, sent to them as a document, and then they can download it, do whatever they need to do, and then they can re-upload it back to you, and then you can grade it. So these things we'll be talking more heavily about once um, we hit phase two and phase three in January and February. So the basic ideas here is we want we want you to get comfortable with what you see um, and then we'll get deeper into the admin menu um, in, on those later dates. And then as well the certificates. So now the certificates you can either click to save as a PDF, you can print it, or you can um, click on it and do a quick view. So those are all the, the learner type widgets um, on the page and Manisha is going to show you some additional widgets that are um, mainly for the admin. So are there any questions about this? I see a few more in the chat. Yeah, so there is a question uh, about the speed. So that's always uh, the top concern um, with the, the LMS, the speed. So with the old LMS, uh, we can even load the leaderboard because it was creating a lot of um, slowness when we load that My Account page. And before the launch, oh, we have been working with K-Learning and Gelfus uh, to improve the speed of the LMS. And we have Ken Rogers here who can talk, maybe give us a background of what, what happened uh, on back end to improve the speed. Ken? Yeah, basically um, everything has been rebuilt from the ground up on a new database um, with more modern technology and um, data structures. So the LMS that you're running previously or currently right now um, was the original one that was created about 10 years ago-ish. Um, and you guys had about 600,000 members in the system and it contained all that data. So every time it tried to refresh something, it had to parse all of that data to, to display those results. So um, it's built in a, a more modern database. It's all still SQL. It's on Amazon Web Services. So um, the servers will grow dynamically as needed um, for speed and capacity. Um, everything is built. So if, like you can see the widgets and the icons are a little bit bigger. So it's a little more mobile friendly um, going forward. Um, the buttons are a little bit bigger in certain areas. We wanted to make it powerful for um, consumption of the data that's in there. So yes, the LMS is a lot faster. You can see um, what we're doing right now through the LMS. This is currently where we're at now. Um, so yes, it will be faster. Yeah, and anytime you wanna declutter your page, you can just click to remove any widgets that you might not need to look at at the moment and then they all are put back up here. So whenever you want you know, to re reinstall it, you just click and, and it comes back up to it. It goes back up to the part of your screen. Okay, so are there any, any other questions right now? Okay, um, Monisha? Okay, I'm gonna share your 
All right, let me share my screen. Can y'all see? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the um, additional widgets that are on your dashboard. Um, these include the enrollment statistic, statistic, woo, statistics, <laughs> ILT roster management, and the reports um, shortcut widget. So let's start with the enrollment statistics. Okay, let me close you guys out. All right, so this widget um, includes six panels of information about the overall use of the curriculum uh, on the LMS. Um, these include um, top courses by number of enrollments, um, top courses by number of completions, um, course enrollments, top learning paths by number of enrollments, and the top learning paths by number of completion. So, um, oh, and learning path enrollments. So if you're familiar with the My Leaderboard that was that Alice discussed earlier, um, that was also on the old LMS. It's pretty much similar to that. Um, it basically just recognizes the top 10 users um, and their top um, certificate completions. So we have that. Um, next, we have the ILT roster management. Okay, so here's where you can view your list of upcoming and completed ILT sessions um, that users have enrolled in. So if you wanted to manage your roster, you'll do so here. And this is the sample session that Alice created. So here's where you would manage your roster. You'll click on that. And here is where we have some sample people on here. We have um, Alice Donna, um, well, Alice Tom and myself in a demo training um, session, but um, I mean account, sorry. Um, so here is where you would see all the participants that are enrolled in the course. And then here is where you would see um, your list of participants that are in the waiting list. So if you ever wanted to promote anyone from the waiting list to the enrolled list, you would either have to demote them or drop them from the enrolled list. And when you do that, it, they would transfer over to the waiting list. And the people on the waiting list, you can either promote them to the enrolled list. And you could do that there. Monisha, and before you get off of that page, uh -huh. uh, one thing to note, for the roster management, when the session time actually has passed, then you'll be able to, in that screen, you'll be able to assign grades, uh, oh, yeah. pass fail, thing, attendance and things like that. So since this course hasn't um, passed today's date yet, um, if it was set up for today or yesterday, then other buttons will appear on that screen so that the instructor can mark them as attended, mark them as passed um, and assign them a grade. Right, I was gonna say that next. Um, oh, sorry, I thought you were getting <laughs> off. Oh, no, no, no problem. But um, yeah, like Ken said, um, if you have um, instructors selected for these sessions, um, they will basically see this widget and will be able to um, manage the session. And once the course is completed, like he said, you can mark them as completed or award them a score. All right, so we're gonna go back to our dashboard. On that one section there, question, sorry. Uh, when you're assessing grades, is it just A, B, C, D, or is it pass, fail, or is it number grade? I believe it's um, by percentage and um, pass, fail, like the old LMS. Correct. Okay. All right, so um, next we have the reports shortcut widget. Um, so most of you are already familiar with our reports tab in the LMS. Um, it functions the same way, but the layout in the new LMS is a little bit different and I think a bit easier because, um, let's see, let's open my sample report. I think it's easier 
for me at least to get the exact information you want. So here is where you would set up your report. Um, you have your column section here and you would select the available items that they have listed. For this specific report, we chose full name, username ID, district, district council. Um, next, you have the filters tab. Here is where you would, um, you know, um, do your filters. Here's the drop down menu for what you want to filter it as. For this one, we selected group. And then now we have the option to um, have your report in ascending and descending order, which would be useful if you're looking for it, if you want someone in, all in order. And then um, in properties, you would just name your report and decide if you want it public or private. And then you can decide if you want to subscribe to it and filter your dates and frequency. So once you run your report, you, can, you have the option to save it. And once the report is saved, let's go back to reports. All right, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I was just gonna ask about, before you leave the page, uh, or it, when, when you're running reports and you're, you wanna target a certain course, is it, uh, you start sorry, this, this sounds wrong in the background. Um, when you start typing the course, does it start to like help you fill it in? Or do you have to just, because sometimes if you're typing it in and then it's not exactly how the course is written out, it won't even pop it up. Is there any way, we, is there like a fill in or can we make it like a drop down? Or, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you would have to uh, put down exactly how the course is um, named. Okay. I don't think we have the option of the um, drop down menu, do we, Ken? No, not right now, but that's a really good idea. I'm gonna note it for um, future releases. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. All right, so once you have your report saved, you'll click here to add the report short, add to report shortcut widget. Let's see, you'll add it there and I can show you where it is on your dashboard. So then, um, one second. All right, so here it is on your dashboard. And if you ever decide you don't want it a part of your shortcuts, you will then click on the reports and simply just remove it from um, the report shortcut widget. And that's all we have. Um, does anyone have any additional questions? There's a question about uh, Google Classroom. Uh, can, uh, can you address that question from Chelsea? Yeah, I'm not familiar with Google Classroom and how you're implementing it. Um, so I'm not sure how you would do that, but we can go with some of your accounts and, and try and see what type of integration, if that's what you're kind of looking for. I don't know if Donna or Alice or Tom, if, if you know a little bit more about that side than I do. No, uh, it's not integrated in the L old LMS. It's, uh, it was a separate class that we did for some of the admins and instructors. And we can revisit that and see the features and if there's a way to integrate that with a new LMS. So I'll, I'll work with Ken just to find out if it's possible. I just wanna mention with the Google Classroom, um, I know that the LMS, we don't want our information being shared with people outside of the union, but anytime you upload or put something into the Google Classroom from the, any source, especially the LMS, it's gonna be in the drives. And all the instructors that are assigned to those drive, uh, to that course can access those drives and the people who were in charge of the domain. So if you uploaded something from the LMS that you didn't want to be on the Google, uh, their server, because that would be access to people not who are not in the union. 
um, that would be a, a problem right there. If for direct information, like you know, what I mean, like links and stuff. That's true. Any other questions for Mo, Alice, or even from the learner view? All right. Okay. No questions. I'm going to hand it over to Ken. Um, Ken, do you want to share your screen, or do you just want to speak? No, I think we can just keep it on there. I mean, there's real. You guys covered everything pretty well. Um, we want to talk about the conversion. Um, basically, anybody that's been in the old LMS, probably 75% is still the same. Um, it should look familiar. The name should be very similar. Um, they may be in a little bit different spot. Um, just keep in mind that the widgets across the top and on the screen are for really reviewing and looking at content and the admin buttons on the left are for creating and monitoring content. So you guys as administrators can look at the users, upload data, um, run reports, create reports. Anytime you're gonna create something that's usually on the left-hand admin bu buttons and the widgets are kind of to, to review um, content that's already created, like all the documents that are there, the calendars that are already created. So just kind of keep that in mind. The cutover, um, we're basically gonna be cutting over, uh, shut it off midnight, on January 4th, we'll do the conversion all day on the 5th, and then at some point during the day on the 6th, it will go live with the new LMS. It'll look just like this. Um, I know that there's a couple there's a couple phases that are going to be rolled out. So things like learning paths and, and things going forward will come out in, in, in a couple different times. So most of the students, um, they're, the only view really is going to change is it's going to be their dashboard instead of my account. All their courses will still be at the top. Um, you guys as administrators and instructors um, have already been had access to the system and see this. All the documentation is being finished up and the, there's a, a course on um, like an online course to teach you how to use the LMS um, that's in development now as well. So I think a lot of the new features that you guys have requested, um, pretty much all of them uh, have been added to the LMS. So some of the stuff looks like it's a lot. Um, you don't have to use all the new features. They are there available if, if that's something you guys want all the way down to the course or to the, um, to the resources for the instructor led training. And the reason we put those things in there are for things like scaffolding, um, welding booths, CPR mannequins, things like that, that you may have a couple different people teaching classes that you wanna manage those resources and know that they're being utilized in that certain classroom. So I think you guys are really gonna like some of the discussion um, features, the message center, and probably with COVID and the way things are happening, uh, probably more of the ILT, the instructor-led training with the WebEx Zoom sessions and the roster management on that. So um, I think you guys did a great job covering everything. Um, the data converted over well, there were some few things and that's why we did the conversion. Um, so I think we're looking good for those dates. If there's any issues or problems or anything like that with, with anything on during the conversion, um, we'll let everybody know. The domain name will still be the same. Um, you'll still go to iftilms.com and it'll just point to the new LMS. So when on January 6th you log in, you'll be seeing this one on January 3rd and 4th, you'll see the current one. But I think that's about all I had to cover unless somebody else had any other overarching questions yeah i'm from miami um garcia um so you so when they do the conversion you're saying that mostly i got students but uh, all the information will be converted to the other one then right correct all their progress will be brought over yes yes sir yeah because i got a bunch of kids with certifications and i don't want them to lose that yes thank you yep yeah, so when we converted this data over, if you guys do log in and look at things, um, we converted this data over, I wanna say August maybe, July, August. So um, anything that's been added to the LMS hasn't been, all the data is not in here. So if you guys are gonna log in after the session and try and run a report and see what happened last week, 
all the, the current activity is not going to be in there. This is a, a, the data that's in here is a snapshot in time. And um, we want to make sure the data converted over properly. The roles came over, the permissions, uh, security groups, uh, that's all been modified quite a bit. Um, the reports all are going to be coming over. The users came over. Um, so all that kind of stuff came over as a snapshot in time. And that's what we've been working with and setting up and make sure things all work properly. And then once, um, once we cut it over on January 4th and 5th, then all the current data, all their progress that they've had all the way up through since this data was converted over will be brought over as well. Yeah, I got a question, sir. Bob Denton, Atterbury Job Corps. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Um, so the homepage, like right now when you go up there, it's got two places so the kids can log in uh, for Job Corps, you know, our Job Corps kids. My question is, is like, so when you go to the LMS, once you get all this switched over, will it show username, password? And is the user username the same? Password still FDI123, correct? Or what we've been using for our Job Corps kids? Yes, the, the password and user information will be the same. Okay, thank you. And there's a couple of questions, uh, suggestions from the ch chat box and uh, requesting for uh, specifications of the new feature or an email that would outline those features. So we'll add that to the email that will be sent out tomorrow, thank plus you. the manual. Thank you. So does anybody have any questions or can anybody um, maybe name one new feature that you like and how you think you might use it? Hi, um, Sade Huber Humphrey Job Corps. I have a question kind of unrelated to the training. Um, I have a student that completed yesterday, so she will be transitioning. Um, she's signed up with the union. Her username, was she, that transitioned to a, a, a number, a member number, or will she just continue to log in with her name? Uh, if you can send us that information, we'll uh, transfer all her Job Corps completions to the new member ID. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Ellis, can I make a comment? Yeah. So uh, it's Mike Moreshi from Boston. Um, what you asked the question, what we seem to like. I personally think um, I like the fact that it mirrors a little bit like the Google Classroom that you uh, exposed us to earlier on. Um, sometime during the summer, we were doing uh, some Google Classroom training. Uh, it, it seems to have some of those features, uh, a lot more user friendly. Uh, in some ways, once I think we get used to all the new stuff. Um, I think you did a lot of work to take all the, uh, they weren't really, it wasn't, I know it wasn't really suggestions. So you guys were under a lot of criticism, um, but you did, uh, initially looking at this, it looks like you guys did an outstanding job. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I would like Me to say something too. This is Hayley oh. Quincy of Angel. Uh, yep. I'm really interested in the, the course uh, roadmap feature and the learning path the learning path yeah mm -hmm. and I'm a, you said we we're going to go over that more later um is it or maybe you did um essentially is that kind of like what teachers do in school where they set up like the year uh what they're going to teach throughout the year and essentially what we're doing is we're putting courses in in um, a profile course of like these five courses we want to do in this order and yes. we're saving that as a as a that's the learning path so as a learning way, path mm -hmm. is there a way uh to share like with instructors like hey i made this learning path and it has good results like you know like a profile you know what i'm saying um we could probably just talk it out like between instructors but you know what i mean like yeah. you know what I mean? Just like when you share, uh, when we're running reports, like how we can share in public and then people can copy and paste that, how they want to run the report. 
Oh, I, Ken, I don't think I don't think that we have a sharing feature for the learning path. No, not with the learning path because there's so many securities built behind who has access to courses and instructors and students and um, things like that. But we can make them um, we can make them available for others to see specifically, just not generally. But I think that's probably the best feature I like the most. I think okay. it's going to be really useful. Yeah, when we, that was one of the things that we really liked about, you know, developing, listening to the people in the field. It's like in the current LMS, um, the instructors enroll people, they give them due dates. Um, the students kind of know what they need to do, but in the learning pass, you can, you can personally assign them. So you can think about um, somebody going down the, the drywall path or the glazing path in different areas. So basically... Uh, using the curriculum builder to create a learning path for all those students. So you could assign them everything from the first year they come in, in their learning paths and give them certificates as they complete um, certain portions of it. So I think it's pretty powerful. I think um, that's one thing that I know everybody was kind of excited about looking at to, to kind of formalize that direction a little bit more. Hey, this is Jeremy Jackson from Excelsior Springs. How are you doing? Hi, Jeremy. Go ahead, Jeremy. Um, I, communication. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, I like the communication inputs you guys put in. I think once the students um, get familiar with it, very beneficial. So I want to say thank you guys for that. You're welcome. I'm glad you like it. I have another question for Miami Job Corps. Now, basically, we're going to get the link on the new program. Now, our students, are they going to receive an email on that too, or we have to send it out to them? Yeah, so, um, so the, our plan is for um, the next two weeks for you guys to be able to, um, to utilize the, the test system. Um, and we'll be going live uh, January 6th with the new system. Um, and, you know, with any new system, it might take a little while for things to get up and running. Um, you know, we might have to make a few adjustments. Um, but that way you'll have a chance to use that system before it goes live um, and there will be communications um, for the learner as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so back in September, we already started updating the LMS homepage. We sent out alerts, post, I mean posted alerts. Then now on the homepage, there is a slider that says 2.0 and if they click that, it would have some of the fe new features of the LMS then we'll be sending out emails to all the admins, DOTs, and ATRs um, about the new features. Then we're also planning to send out an email to all the members with email addresses, uh, just to give them a heads up that the, the version will be live on January 6th. Thank you. I have a question. This is Damian Thompson, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Um. So for the training courses, um, you know how the, on the home page, the training courses are kind of located at the bottom. Is any of that going to change at all in how we sign in to those courses? So the login will still be um, from the, the main home page that you're used to seeing. Um, and then once you log in, you'll be, um, it used to take you to my account, but now it's called my dashboard. So. Once you get, once you log in with your credentials, your username and password, um, it, it'll launch the My Dashboard page where your enrollments and, and other widgets will be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, this is Kelly from Flint Job Corps. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Um, had asked, you know, how to move the students to 
the first year apprentice status and you said to just send you an email, should we send that to you directly or do we go through the help desk, you know, on the, um, through the LMS? You, you said you have a new email address? No, I have two students that completed the program that need to be moved to first year apprentices. And then I've got four students to add to my paint, uh, Flint paint group. Do we do that just as a direct email to you, Alice, or Donna, or should we go through the help desk on the LMS? Yeah, you can send, um, you can send any, any information to the FTI International email. Okay, thank you. Yep, and that way, when, when you send it to the FTI International email, um, you know, there are several people that have access to that, so that we hope that we can get to your questions quickly. Might be quicker than just sending it to one of us individually. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll, um, we also will provide you, um, we'll have a, a learner manual as well as a admin manual. Um, and so we'll be providing those to you um, as guidance, you know, when, as you're working through the system. We'll put those, we'll put them in your LMS account. Okay, are there any other questions? I was very I a question. <laughs> it's just me, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I must have missed the part about the in-classroom portion since most um, with our program, the painters, we have the hybrid program. So in-classroom training, but from my understanding, and I must have missed it, how would the transcript and the uploads portion work for those apprentices, considering if we're doing the, tra the training in classroom and not through um, Zoom or anything like that? Well, so we still have the import activity um, data feature. So you'll still upload those if they're classroom training using this spreadsheet. So when they create, so if I create a learning path for a student and a number of those classes are in classroom and then a portion are online only and some are what I would classify as hybrid, meaning they would need to do partly online training and partly in classroom training, how would those classes work for those apprentices? So when you set up the instructor-led training, um, you'll be able to identify whether it's classroom, um, web-based, or um, so, so those will be each be different iterations of the training, you'll be able to track them individually. Could, could you hear me? There was a little interference. Yeah, just a little bit of interference at the end there. <laughs> yeah, so, so just in case you didn't hear, so the instructor-led training um, has the, you, you can create different instructor-led sessions that would include um, instructor-led training, um, web-based training, so whether it's you know, maybe conducted through a Zoom meeting, um, or if it's there's a task, then there, you can uh, identify it that way. Um, and then, so they'll all be separate iterations of that training that will be tracked separately. Okay. As, as part of the overall course. So it gives you the flexibility to have those in-person, online, um, or, um, or uh, the uh, Zoom type meetings. That leads me to my next question. <laughs> so if a person, is in a learning path and we schedule a class. Um, now say there's a prereq for taking the next class and the original class was a in-person class. And since that's gonna be a manual upload before they can go to the next class, is that going to interfere with the student's uh, schedule in case we're like behind? Cause I know for me, I have to backdate a lot of apprentices because I don't get their uploads in time. 
Yeah, well, and if you have if you have them set up as prerequisites, then the prerequisite would have to be satisfied before they'd be able to move on. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Yeah, I know we have a lot of questions about the instructor-led training and the learning path. That's why we, we're scheduling additional webinars for that since we want uh, most of the district council to transition to those new features. So we're planning uh, two other webinars for those topics, end of January and end of February. So we'll be sending that registration invite again through the FTI uh, email. But those features are available to you in this test system. So you can feel free to, to poke around and, and, and investigate those. This is, and this is Tom, and I know, um, I think I mentioned at the beginning, but as far as teaching techniques, uh, you know, because we're looking at potentially some blended uh, approaches here where we're going to offer some of the classroom, potentially instructor-led using the LMS. Um, we're going to be working with Ken Rogers, K KLMS, and, and Michelle, instructor for Teaching Techniques 1. So we already have that course loaded. We had it loaded with Blackboard with MCTC, but we're, we're going to use our try it with this system and load it. We got most of the materials loaded up there. So over the break here, uh, Kenny, Kenny and I and, and Michelle um, and Alice and Donna, we're going to be working on that to, to really get an understanding of how that instructor-led training can be used in a kind of a blended approach um, before your classroom. So again, th that will have, you know, the discussion boards that will have potentially you know, assessments that will have, you can have your lecture notes, you can have your PowerPoints, you can have the Zoom set up in there and they can collaborate, you know, when the class is, uh, when the class is not necessarily going live. So you can, you can use it both for synchronous and asynchronous as well. So, so we'll, we'll have, we'll have a pretty good feel of that. Um, again, Ken and I have been working on loading the materials and we're going to get with uh, the instructor to to go through that uh, during the break here. Um, so so we'll, we'll have some pretty good um, insight on how that can be used and to be beneficial to. Okay. Any so other I questions. For Ken, for Alice, for me, or for Mo? Um, Manisha? Yeah. Yes. Oh, can you talk about, I know there's going to be an email tomorrow. Can you talk about what, what they can expect via email? Yep, so in the email tomorrow, I will send you all the link to the demo um, LMS. LMS, and I'll send along the, um, the manual and um, your username and password. It should be the same username and password that you use in the current LMS right now. You shouldn't have a problem logging on. Don, is there anything else you want me to include in the email as far as attachments? Yeah, I'll work with Ken just to identify those uh, new features so you can add it to the email. Okay. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, once we hang up, um, you can send your questions to the FTI International at ifti.edu. Is that our email address? No, <laughs> it's FTI International at ifti.edu. Or right, just click that link on the LMS homepage. Right, the contact form, right. And I wanted to add that we're still updating um, permissions, everyone's permissions in the new LMS. So um, we'll just notify you when that is complete so you can test the site out. Okay, well, if there aren't any more questions, that will conclude the webinar. Appreciate everybody getting on and we'll look forward to having you in January. And, and watch the LMS homepage for further communication and alerts from us. Thank you very much. All right.
Thank you. Awesome. Stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. $9 million. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you and happy holidays, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks, you guys. Happy holidays. Can't wait to kick the tires on the new car. <laughs>